Some people have told me that DMC Devil May Cry is a good game, but a bad Devil May Cry. Well, I gotta say, it was a bad Devil May Cry. Nice. I played a lot of bad games. Some of them are just bad to the state of being unplayable, some are just boring bad, and some are DMC Devil May Cry. Helicopter, helicopter! Okay, can I not call it that? What kind of SMH my head name is this? From now on I will call it a DMC reboot. And if we look into the Devil May Cry series, it is considered to be one of the best video game franchises of all time, releasing banger after banger after banger after probably one of the greatest video game masterpieces of all time. But there are layers icebergs to this, and if we gaze into the flaming pits of hell and go deep, deeper, no, no, like really deep, okay, not that deep, we will stumble upon these two, holy shish, these games are abominations, well, the second one is, it is quite literally one of the worst games I've ever played, and I played some stickers in my lifetime, trust me. But what about the reboot? It can't be that bad. It is. It is fucking horrible mess of a dumpster fire diarrhea projected right into my oral cavity and sprinkled with some no-no words and sex every three seconds. Whoa, hold up there, Bass. Aren't you being too harsh on the game? Yes, well, yes I am. But after suffering through more than 30 hours of this pathetic excuse of a game, I just cannot contain my feelings about it. The game fails at literally everything it does. Gameplay? Bad. Music? Inconsistent. Boss fights? Garbage. Combos? Lack depth. Story? <laughs> Visual design is good. No, really, it is really, really good. And cool looking. One of the only things they nailed in this game. So in this video I would like to take out this souvenir I got from my trip to Birmingham and really dissect this game for us to analyze. But why, you may ask? Well, it is simply because I'm not a big fan of enduring agonizing torture alone, so come and join me. Look on a mask of my boy. So before I start disintegrating this game into complete molecules, I would like to talk about what this game does and actually succeeds in. And what is good about the game? Well, while it is loading you can watch some sample combos, which is cool. So what is bad about the game? Literally everything else. But jokes aside, the visual presentation of this game is great. The car palette, the transforming world, these cool lines of text appearing at some moments, it just feels like you know, like Ugh! Everything besides the characters and enemies models look great. The battle themes are on point in trying to get that punk feeling to the game, which results in the creation of the most awesome metal tracks this series has. Oh, wait. Do you guys hear that? Oh no, they're coming! Hide the women, save the kids, run! Um, actually, this is not metal. metal. This, this is, is, is not metal. This 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 is not metal. More than three listeners is not metal. The poser. Can't show you the music though because it is copyrighted. But don't worry, I will recreate it for you. Hey, you! What the freak is? I can't swear because YouTube will demonetize my video. But as I said before, soundtrack is very inconsistent, and some points it will blast you with some sweet dubstep tunes that literally makes my eardrums explode. Sound design on the weapon suffers from the same issue. Some weapons sound and feel really good, and some just feel like someone is scratching the blackboard with a fork. Seriously, what is this sound? And that is pretty much all I can think of even remotely close to being good. Okay, let's talk about the gameplay now. The gameplay of the series always consisted of three main elements. Combat, the most important part of them all, platforming that always makes me contemplating game ending myself, Welcome. and searching for secrets and orbs. And let's talk combat first, and I don't even know where to start with it. The combat feels like a downgrade from Devil May Cry 1 that came out way back in 1984 when dinosaurs were walking among us. Oh it has pretty much no depth at all. The combos are wacky and very satisfying at times, but the game suffers a lot from the enemy designs, which in a game like this is hugely important. Every time you try to play the game and do something cool, the game goes like, okay, stop, wait, no, 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 stop, do not try anything cool, okay, stop. 
Okay, now you can play the game. Oh, do, 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 stop! Did I just catch you having fun? No, you're not supposed to have that. On higher difficulties, I was literally yeah baby dot mp4 when I saw an enemy that I can actually combo. Every single enemy type in this game makes you want to tear your hair out because each and every one of them limits what weapons you need to use to win. You see this guy? Use fists. Oh, shields? Use an axe. This spirit from Dead by Daylight? Use these things. Oh, nice shadow warrior weapon you got there. Now let me take it to an actual good game. Imagine you are playing Devil May Cry 3 and the game goes like, oh, you see these dudes? The only way to do any damage to them is to use funny talking swords. Have fun, dumbass. And Devil May Cry 1 also did that. Plasma and Frost dudes were taking way less damage from the Electro Sword, but they were still taking it. Some of the enemies in this game are color coded, which means you can only use two weapons on them. No, you can't use your guns either, fuck you! This is not about having fun, this is about Put being cool. This. If you try to attack them with your normal weapons, it will just literally bounce off like in that other game that nobody played. What the fuck? But at least let me use it to chain the combo together. And on higher difficulties, it is very hard to find an enemy which is not a color coded garbage. Seriously, Devil May Cry 2 had better enemies. Who thought that this is a good idea? And some enemies are just fucking awful. In Devil May Cry 4, I really disliked fighting Blitz because you're forced to use a specific playstyle of shooting it first and then dealing damage. But luckily, you didn't have to fight this guy too many times. Well, in this stinker, everyone is blitz. Pretty much all of the enemies are invincible or unstunnable unless you do something to it. And again, on higher difficulties, you only fight these enemies, stacked on top of each other over and over just the way I like it. I think this enemy in particular really encapsulates everything that is awful with this game. This chick has a shield that you need to break with a specific weapon. Then you can do like 5 seconds of damage to her and then she teleports away with a new shield. Awesome. You can also parry the daggers she throws at you, which is very hard, considering how janky hitboxes Don't are in this game. Or you can pull the daggers to you and then send them back, which also doesn't work because of the awful targeting system that we'll discuss in a bit. You can't ignore the enemy either, because she can shield any enemy as well, and you have to fight her like 20 times if not more, accompanied by the same invincible enemies over and over again, it is so fucking stupid. There are also these flying guys that are impossible to fight because they can just cast an AoE that you cannot cancel when they feel like they took enough damage and they can spam it too. And speaking about the spam, take an educated guess what this game likes to do with these enemies. One, two, three, four. No. The game also doesn't have a focus mechanic. I don't know what kind of hardcore drugs you need to insert in your anal cavity to think that a game like Devil May Cry doesn't need a focus mechanic, but that was the decision they made. Just look at this shit. Why are you turning away, you bastard man? This may not feel like that big of a deal, but in the game where you need to target a specific enemy to not die in a millisecond, it is kind of a big deal. Combos may look flashy and satisfying at times, but it is typical for a western game of this caliber to look cool and do nothing. Basically, in this game you have angel weapons and demon weapons. And you see, cool and flashy aerial combos are only possible if you are using angel weapons. Demon weapons may help you juggle enemies on the ground, but they require you to stay still for a very long time, so, you know, Go figure. Also, to use these weapons, you have to hold R2 and L2, which feels so awkward and not intuitive, and I was glad to see I was not the only one to think that. The only thing I liked about the combos are that they have a very cool way of chaining together. Basically, with these bam bam paws, bam 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 attacks, you can switch the weapons in between the paws, and it will continue the new weapons combo instead of starting it from scratch. And speaking of controls, the control scheme for this game is fucked. You have a dedicated launch button for whatever reason that doesn't add anything at all. No really, why did you make it a dedicated button? You're not using back to forward, you're not using different pause timings, why did you make this? 
and the dodge roll is on a dedicated button as well. Two of them in fact. And that also does pretty much nothing. At least add a legacy controller setup for people like me. Come the fuck on! Guns in the game are also awful. Just look at whatever this is. What is this move? Why is it so slow? The only gun that does anything at all is the sticky bomb gun, which works on like two enemies in the game and is pretty good for cheating them, but against the majority of your enemies you better off jumping off a cliff. Devil Trigger looks really cool, but is pretty much useless. All enemies start floating and thus making your combos harder to do, and also can bug out and start whooping your ass. The only thing the Devil Trigger is good for is blinding you if you're playing in the night. Also some increased damage, but that's boring. Whew, that was a lot. Where were we? Ah yes, the platforming. It's alright. If you like pressing square a lot, this is perfect for you. It is better than Devil May Cry 3 platforming, but you don't have to try at all all to beat that. But again, the game limits you hard with it. You can only throw your grapple hook while standing at a very specific place. If you're not, you will fall and die. Some of the times your QTE jumps will not happen at all, no matter how hard you spam the button, which is also a pleasure. Now for the secrets and collectibles. Would it be a surprise to you if I told you that they're bad? There are three types of collectibles in the game. Lost Souls, Keys and Doors. Lost Souls are the worst of them all. They grant you pretty much nothing, except for the very smart and quirky reference to the first game. Good job guys, really funny. You found it? Cool. Now I get slightly more points and a slightly better rank at the end of the mission. Did not found it? Well, too bad, enjoy not getting a triple S rank at the end of the mission. I don't know how they managed to fuck up this many mechanics at once, but the keys are also done horribly. In normal games, there is pretty much always a key that opens some door during the same mission. Well, in this game it is rarely the case. You will have two bronze keys and one silver door that you cannot open because fuck you! Keys are stored to use later for whatever reason. If you're not using a guide, you may go out of your way to find a hidden door to only realize you don't have a key for it. Who thought that it was a good idea to do that? And the secret missions themselves are... Okay, except maybe a little bit too easy. Now let's talk a bit about everyone's favorite thing, the bosses. <laughs> if you have watched my last video, please watch it, it's, it's really good, I worked really hard on it, please. You already know how important boss fights are in pretty much any video game. Some of you people talk a lot of shit about the Eurozen fights, and I hands down would rather fight 10 Eurozens at once than fight one boss in Devil May Cry reboot. Bosses are pretty much QTE fights. You dodge one attack, hit the guy a couple of times, and then press your grappling hook button to win. I'm not kidding. There are no attack patterns to learn, no parrying necessary, no strategy needed, one dodge is more than enough. The only two bosses that are okay are the first and the last bosses of the game. Virgil at least tries to fight back and the first boss is only cool because it's an actual fight that doesn't involve pressing your grappling hook button to win. Seriously, I don't know why are they obsessed with this thing so much that every single boss in the game force you to use it to win. Why? What, why? What's the point of this? Not to mention all of the bosses are invincible until you do something to it. Kinda of familiar, don't you think? They don't involve any skill, they don't involve any patience, a toddler can pick up a controller and beat each and every one of those bosses on hell and hell with ease and probably with eyes closed as well. They even fucked up the Virgil fight to create these stupid standoffs where he just stands still and you need to shoot off his white dildos that keep appearing. You could've just copy pasted him from Devil May Cry 3, why is all this so fucking awful? It's all fucking awful, it's all of it, all of it, and every single one of them sucks! Okay, now let's talk about the story, and for your sake, I hope your cringe inhibitors are on, because it is about to get really, really stinky in here. You're an asshole! Real Rock FM! Where we play nothing but rock, rock, and more rock. This ain't your granny station. When I'm thinking Devil May Cry, 
I am always thinking about the characters. Capcom has succeeded in creating some of the most charismatic, likable and most importantly cool characters. Dante with his carefree attitude with pretty much no value for his life that always stays on top no matter what. Virgil being literally the definition of cool, Nero being the most badass character ever written and Lady and Trish well, there too, I guess, I don't know. When I play Devil May Cry, no, not you, go away. I always appreciate and adore all over the top cool stuff these characters perform and their goofy dialogue. Whoa, slow down, babe. The game knows not to take itself seriously, and that what makes it, and Resident Evil for that matter, awesome, and one of my favorite game franchises of all time. The game can be serious at times, but it never overdoes it, because you know what happened the last time they took themselves seriously. And this game takes itself really, really seriously. The game always stops you to tell you the most uninteresting story known to mankind, featuring the most unlikable characters ever written. At least the cutscenes are skippable. You did fucking not. The last thing this game needed is a fucking trailing mission. Fuck you. It's so long too. God, why can't you just skip it? The story is terrible, and the main plot can be summed up pretty much like this. Hey, it's me, Dante. I don't give a shit and I fuck chicks. And also I drink. But you are my brother. Oh, cool. Hey, what's your name? Oh, it's a generic woman needed for a forced love interest of the main character. Cool, we're in love now. Hey, let's kill Big Bad Demon. Okay, we killed Big Bad Demon. What's now? Oh, foolishness, Dante. I was evil all along. No, I did not see that coming. Let's fight. Oh, you are too powerful. I leave. I am sad, but tomorrow will be a new day. And this bullshit story is accompanied by some of the worst dialogues ever written. You missed my name, by the way, is Dante. Dante, son of Spada and Eva. The You can call me Dante the Demon Killer. Has a nice ring to it, don't you think? You want to kill me? You can't kill me? I'm 1200 years old! You don't look a day over 12,000. <laughs> doesn't understand what Devil May Cry is or what the definition of the word cool is for that matter. This game feels like a Netflix show about Devil May Cry with the same level of respect for the source material and the same dialogues that make you want to die of cringe. Doctor, turn off my cringe inhibitors! But Titan, the amount of cringe you're facing is merging right into levels! I don't care, do it now! Who the fuck are you? The game feels like one of those dystopian Hollywood movies where teens would rebel because they're rebels and not like the stupid adults bringing down the stupid dystopian regime. They even got the two hot dudes and one boring girl stable correctly. Wow, this game feels like Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix where they try too hard to tell you that this is a dark story now, for adults and adults only, this is not for kids, look we have sex in this game and Dante literally drinks and fucks and the main villain fucks and she also does and then he likes to drop. Who wrote this? Instead of being badass and over the top cool, the game thinks that to make a character look badass you have to make him swear at literally everything. And the Oscar goes to... Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! <laughs> the fact that Dante's voice actor literally put zero effort into his performance also doesn't help. Just listen to this. Not good. Yeah, whatever. Or this. Oh, and also, this is the way he indicates his slam attack. Yeah! 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 
And this is such a shame too, because I think the guy who voices Mandas and Bob Barbas, Lewis Hertham, is doing a killer performance, and it is such a shame it is going to waste. I brought prosperity. I brought structure. And what have you brought? Besides violence, war, death. This fucking character tries so hard to be an outlaw punk, but just feels like a cringy teenager yelling slurs to look cool. Succubus, suck on this. Hey, Succubus, suck on this. <clears throat> I can't. I'm sorry, guys. I need a moment. Time to go to work, guys. Didn't your mother ever teach you how to use a door? You summon and kill. Summon and kill. I fail to see the logic here. It's like staring into a backed up toilet. Why do you always stick your nose in other family's business? You can hide that body, but that smell? Ooh, there's no cover. This is where you die. I'm not going anywhere. Besides, there's no place to go. Look around. This will be your burial ground as well. Okay, I'm back. Let's get back to this fucking shit show. You have to realize even the infamous voice crack sounds 10 times better than 80% of the voice lines in this game. The game features basically four characters, which are an angry teenager. I'm Derek Darkblade, but people usually call me the Cursed or His Darkness or, more likely, that fucking demon. Surprised, I swear? Get used to it. After my parents were brutally stabbed 37 times and decapitated, I've become acquainted to the darker side of life. In my 19 and a half years on this shithole planet, I've also learned you can't trust anyone but yourself. Also, I have tattoos. Also, f fuck you. A crybaby, a woman rice? <laughs> the scroll. Burn it. And Mandas. Yes, this is how they get Mandas, one of the most memorable and cool boss fights in the history of video games. God, this sucks! Is that... Mom? What is this, Shenmue? A blue rose. A token with a moon design. So not only the characters are homo and cringy, and the voice acting for the main character is awful, on top of that, the whole story is just so stupid. It's like they made a challenge to fuck up every aspect of this game possible and oh boy did they succeed it. For some reason the game decided to add angels to the game, which also serves no purpose. They don't appear in the game even once and do not have any influence on the story at all. Why? Now there is the last character and aspect of the game I want to talk about before we end this, so let's just cut to the chase now. Virgil has always been my favorite character from the Devil May Cry series. He's an amazing rival like villain with memorable voice lines and one liners. So I was really curious on how they did him in this game. And I got a bigger dick. I was sad. Virgil is a sad loser that serves no purpose for the story. For some reason he's a hacker now, who doesn't do anything besides giving you quests, saying I am in in the hacker voice and saying the meme line from the Invincible. There is not a single enemy this guy kills during this whole game. So Dante is like really powerful, what can Virgil do? Also, he's like Captain Price of the Devil May Cry reboot cinematic universe, interesting. And the end of the game, he obviously betrays you out of nowhere because he's evil. Wait, is he? This betrayal literally comes out of nowhere. For some reason, he immediately decides that he wants to rule the world. Yes, I'm not kidding. This is the plot of the game. Austin Powers had more depth than this. Besides some very ominous foreshadowing by this guy. And if you do kill Mundus, who would take his place? Gee, I wonder who can it be? There are like four characters in this game and one of them is Mundus himself. Wait, no. Can it be? It's the fat guy from the cutscene! He was fueled by the anger of not finishing his diet coke, so now he will put this world instead of constant agony. And some weird eye movement here and there. Oh. 
Oh. He genuinely seems like a saint who carries his sword around as an accessory. It's Yamato for fuck's sake, do something with it! So, funny story, this video was supposed to be I 100% a DMC reboot, so now you don't have to, but one thing has completely annihilated all my desire to even boot up the game, not to mention beating it a couple of extra times, and it is a virtual DLC. It's the biggest piece of dog shit that I have ever heard. This DLC just takes everything that is wrong about the reboot and increases its problems tenfold. And that's some new ones, obviously. The cool visual design is gone, as all the locations look exactly the same. The absence of backtracking, which I found to be really refreshing in the DMC reboot, is gone as well, because out of six missions, two of them are the exact same. Your character feels pathetic, slow and weak, which is very weird considering that it is Virgil we are talking about. It takes him a literal hour to swing his katana in the demon mode, his combo game is very weak, your angel attacks look cool but have some annoying tiny delay in between them. Your gap closer also has a huge delay and sometimes doesn't even work as intended, but I gotta say... Judgment Cut is cool. New enemies add close to nothing to the game, the big doggos are pretty okay, but the Wisp is again another one of those guys that you have to do something to kill. Wow, what a new and refreshing concept. You are pretty weak against the shields because you have to do 4 consecutive swings of the slowest attacks known to mankind and for some reason the damage you do just feels pathetic. I felt like enemies were dying more quickly at Dante Must Die when I played as Dante than here on the Nephilim difficulty that is below the Son of Sparta. Instead of just being a loser this time, Virgil becomes a pathetic loser. He runs around like a crybaby, saying that nobody likes him anymore, loses his heart and becomes a literal edgelord because, get this, get this, Mami didn't like him as much as Dante and this fact literally comes out of nowhere. Hey guys, Editing Bass here. While editing this video, I noticed that I forgot to mention a crucial piece of information here. It really seems like I'm undervaluing importance of a childhood trauma and goofing on the liberal snowflakes, which is not at all true. What I really meant to say here is, this mommy didn't like him as much as Dante really comes out of nowhere, like he just made it up as he killed the woman rights. Even his mom says it's not true, but no 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 no, he needed some reason to be evil, so here it is. Amazing writing, but back to the video. Guys, this is Virgil we're talking about, remember him? Knowing this, I thought you'd be more useful to me. But I was wrong. <laughs> On top of that, the DUC is filled with bugs and jank, even more than the main game. I think we did a pretty good job so far. The game is such a buggy, inconsistent mess. During my Dante Must Die run, enemies were constantly getting stuck under the map, leaving me with nothing I can do. And every time it happened, it happened on the last wave of some ridiculously stupid fights. Like this one, where you have to fight 100 of those flying fucks. It happened twice here actually. The game might softlock you into this falling purgatory which straight up ruined my hell and hell run. Oh look at this awesome level that denies you the opportunity to go fast, forcing you to stand fucking still and wait for your time to enjoy this awesome platforming. This level is one of the worst levels of all the Devil May Cry series in its entirety and when you combine it with the fact that the flame might damage you when it is not even on the screen, it only gets better. Every arena you fight has this tiny holes everywhere that are quite good for cheating enemies but in my opinion they make the game 10 times worse. While doing an aerial combo you cannot afford to look below you to see if there is any solid ground underneath you and when you decide to slam your enemy on the ground to juggle them a bit, maybe out of habit or you wanna risk it, you instantly fall through the map. Some enemies just decide to fall down on their own without you even doing anything, or you might push them down there by accident when you just want to style on them instead. Oh, and if you just fall into a hole yourself, you will not get out, as you can't pull yourself out with the grapple hook half of the time because you don't have focus in this piece of shit game. And this fucking DLC decides to do all that but more. I fell through the map not one, not two, not even three, but four times in four different locations, 
forcing me to restart. I would teleport an enemy to me with my mirage blade and they will immediately do an attack without any indication. Some enemies don't even have to be pulled by you to do it, they just attack out of an idle animation. Your combo starter literally won't work 30% of the time because Virgil played Dark Souls too much. How did you fuck this one up? What is happening here? This is why I really did not want to play this anymore. I am basically halfway through my Hell and Hell run as Dante, but when I realized I have to beat this crap six times again, I decided that I would rather not. If it's not fun, why bother? The question that bugged me since I started playing the game in the first place was why? Why did you make this? For who? The fans of the series will not like it at all, you basically spat in their face in every way you could. The people that actually like these moves you used with sex and swear words every 10 seconds or wouldn't be able to enjoy the game either because they're not of legal age to play it yet. This game doesn't have a clear target audience. Even the lead designer of this game confirms that there is no demographic that this game would be appealing to. This game was released one month prior to Metal Gear Rising, which did not look visually as impressive, I gotta admit, but this game literally slam dunks this crap into oblivion with every way possible. And the best thing is, that this game is also a spin-off of a well-beloved series that was done under a different studio. But that studio handled things with care and respect to the source material while also introducing their new ideas. I often hear criticism about Devil May Cry reboot and people usually say stuff like it shouldn't have been Devil May Cry game and instead its own thing which is, in my opinion, completely wrong. Not a single person would care about this heavily mediocre game if it wasn't for the Devil May Cry label on it. Just look how many games it tries to compete with, and all of these are infinitely better than this definition of mediocrity. So, what have we learned from this? What questions can we ask ourselves? Well, first of all, did I went too hard on the game? Probably yes. It's just I hate games like this, man. They take somewhat of a cool idea and butcher it to the state of being mediocre trash that not a single person should waste their time on. It's actually really interesting to see Dante and Virgil slowly crawling back to their prime form where I used to see them. The game has these cool features of showing the twins being very inexperienced, like the way Dante stumbles after a stinger, it is awesome! There is a really cool video of comparing movesets of the Devil May Cry reboot and the moveset of Devil May Cry 5, and if you are interested in it, check it out, it is really cool. I tried asking a lot of people in my social circle, on Reddit, on Discord, what they think about this reboot, and a lot of people actually defend this game. But what it usually boils down to is, oh yeah, th this is bad, yeah. Oh, this is also pretty bad, did not like that. This is also a very trash mechanic, true. Oh, this? Yeah, this is unplayable garbage, I agree. So, do you hate the game, or... Oh no, it has really good gameplay, and it's pretty cool, 7 out of 10. Guys, I'm not an expert here, but if the first things that come to your mind are the bad ones, Maybe the game is not that great. And the thing is, for some people, this is Devil May Cry. My friend from high school actually met the Devil May Cry series through this game, and I unfortunately cannot contact him anymore, but he enjoyed it even more than Devil May Cry 3. And there are actually a lot of people that enjoyed the game too, which is great. A quick reminder, you don't have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anyone ever. You should always stick to what you think and are free to enjoy any game you want. For example, I really enjoy the new Modern Warfare 2 and this is a piece of shit game. I know it sucks, but I still like it. The thing about the reboot is, if you boot it up and play it once, it feels fine. I even enjoyed it during my first playthrough. But the moment you start playing it more and it increases the difficulty, you start seeing cracks. You see the stuff that was overlooked, if not completely forgotten to be looked at. You start paying attention to mechanics more, and the thought of maybe this game is shit actually starts crawling in faster and faster with each mission. Where I can replay Devil May Cry 3 another 3 times in a row, and my opinion about it would not change, if only for the better. Devil May Cry series was always about getting good, as you kids call it. Getting more stylish and becoming the legendary demon hunter this game wants you to be. In the reboot, there are not a lot of things to get good at. Bosses are easy, combos lack the necessary depth, platforming is brain dead. The only thing you want to get good at is spamming the start button on the controller to not hear a single line of dialogue. In my opinion, the only good thing that came out of this game 
is some lessons they learned to create Devil May Cry 5. It's always nice to see people learning from their mistakes, unlike some other game devs I know. So, is the game good? Hell no. Is the game bad? Yeah, yeah it's pretty bad. Will I ever play this again? I'm a million years. This is the end of the video. No, stop, don't look at the runtime. This is the end of the video. If you are watching this only to hear me talk about the Devil May Cry reboot, you are free to go and enjoy your time and maybe play some Devil May Cry 3 in the process. I'll just sit here a bit. Bye bye now. No, you can't use the bathroom. Okay, see you later. <clears throat> okay, I think they're gone. Ninja Theory, quoting your own soundtrack. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> The video was originally intended to end here, but then something piqued my interest. Upon doing research on this game, I was trying to find some info about the budget of the game, but did not find anything close to being official besides some people theorizing about it on game FAQs. So I decided to look up the game's info on Wikipedia, and the thing I read there made me hate the game even more. But, you know, it's Wikipedia, you rarely can trust the stuff it says. But then some people on my Reddit thread said something similar, so I decided to dig deeper and what I found was pretty interesting. As I understand it, the decision to create a reboot was made because Devil May Cry 4 did not sell insanely well. It was still a commercial success, but was not selling as well as other games from Capcom. And I'm not a marketing genius or anything, but isn't it something you were expecting? You did one of the most hated things you can do while creating a sequel. You switched the main character. Also, the budget was too low, but characters are worse in my opinion. Take Metal Gear Solid 2 as an example. In my opinion, it is one of the best pieces of media ever created, and on release, fans were hating it. They were literally spewing acid at the game because the game forced you to play as Raiden instead of the beloved character loved by the fans, and I'm talking of course about Pliskin. It's such a shame he only appeared in the second game, really liked the guy. But when the dust has settled in, the fact that Metal Gear Solid 2 is a masterpiece is basically unquestionable now. Now, Devil May Cry 4 might not be a masterpiece on the same level as Metal Gear Solid 2, but it is pretty solid. God, I am so funny! Even in my comment section under Devil May Cry 5 video, everyone is telling me to play the fourth one, and after finishing it, I really enjoyed it. As a company, if you do a stunt like this, you have to be prepared to face the consequences. But let's leave it at that. Capcom decided to make the series more appealing to the Western audience by creating a Western spin-off of the series. And for some reason, they chose Ninja Theory, a British studio that was highly unremarkable until the release of Heavenly Sword in 2007. Now, I'm not an expert, but choosing a studio over one game that is not even that good might not be the cleverest idea to be honest, but what happened happened. So just so we're on the same page here, the fans were mad at the company for switching the protagonist, so they decided to do the same thing again, but worse. <clears throat> what? Ninja Theory got a complete creative freedom and pretty much no supervision from the creators of the original games, as I understand it, which was a huge red flag already, but it gets worse. A lot worse. The guys decided to destroy pretty much all the foundations set by the original creators and create their own new, refreshed and cool foundation, while at the same time spitting in the mouths of all the fans. Well, more like shitting Taco Bell diarrhea out of their assholes into the faces of the fans. They were claiming that the games on PS2 are not cool anymore, and Devil May Cry reboot is what is actually cool. Oh wait, I guess it is not cool anymore. That's more like it. And I got a bigger dick. So what is cool in their opinion? Sex, swear words, door store voice acting, more sex, more swear words, and a dick measuring competition. And don't even get me started on totally not forced references and clever homages to the originals. It is lame. Besides 12 year olds that just discovered what sex is, and girls in their teens simping for guys out of that era of Hollywood movies, who will find 
any of this cool. Yeah, yeah, boom! Oh, I, I'm sorry, I forgot this is not cool, I apologize. They wanted this crap to compete with Bayonetta. <laughs> <laughs> not to mention the amazing ad campaign these guys had. Are you guys ready for the cool, western, grounded and stylish game presented to you by Tyler fucking Jordan? Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell yeah. no, man. What the absolute fuck is this? This is literally not only disgusting and bigoted, but some of the worst memes I have seen, even by that day's standards. Hell yeah! Boom! Slam! Yeah! Oh fuck, I forgot. This is gay. I'm sorry, guys. I literally have no words of describing this. Play DMC reboot if you are not gay? <laughs> well, it's time for me to go gay, I suppose, because they got a better game. Ninja Theory is a horrible, homophobic and disgusting studio that does not understand what it is doing half of the time, while at the same time antagonizing actual fans of the series and then spitting them in the face. And the funniest thing is, after you beat the game, you see a little preview of their studio, like they're proud of creating this piece of shit. Small hint, you should not be proud of any of this. Fuck this game and fuck Ninja Theory.